Joe is someone that if I had a lineup of 20 of my, my friends that I know back to front, I would put him last as someone that I would ever think is struggling. Now, Roman, you are hosting a new documentary. Yes. For the BBC, is that right? Yes, do indeed. You, do you want to tell us a bit about that? Because last yeah. year you went through some some pretty uh, tragic events, didn't you? Yeah. So um, I, I, I've done a, a documentary with, with BBC Three um, called Our Silent Emergency. And this was probably the... I've, I've said this in a way like of like, this was something I never expected to do i didn't want to do but i knew i had to do um mm. and so last year um last year i i lost um my best friend like my my best best mate my brother the guy who i spent all my day with at work all my day with in the evenings going out all that type of stuff the person who knew me better than anyone and i lost him to to mental health right and and it was horrendous. It was the worst thing I think. It was hands down it was the worst thing I've ever experienced in my life, and traumatic and and all of that. And at that point, I I kind of I realized that you know I had to do something because the the the, the weeks kind of following that was such a blur in my head. Now, when I talk about mental health and things like that like for me uh, i know that me personally from when i was 15 years old about the same time when i was doing music all those types of things um i was diagnosed with with a with a chemical depression which means that my body doesn't release enough serotonin and those types of things so therefore i was placed on antidepressants right and antidepressants again not for everyone but but they have helped me and i still continue to take them every day and that's part of my life and so I've always been very aware of the struggles that, of, of mental health and things like that. But I've always genuinely been quite afraid of um, putting it out there that it's a part of my life. Because I, you know, and this is just me talking, you know, this has never kind of been driven by my team or anything like that. It's like, I always thought, oh man, like if I go, I'm a radio presenter who's happy and like always up. If I go out there and say, actually guys, I, I've, I take antidepressants and sometimes I don't want to get out of bed. Like people are going to say one, then, Oh, then your other side must be really fake. And then two, it's how can you be sad about anything? You've got great parents, all this stuff, everything, mm. which again, makes sense. Like, you know, it does make sense in the sense of, you know, how you know, I I'm guilty of it. Sometimes, you know, you look on Instagram and you see a celebrity going, Oh my God, I'm going through such a tough time. And then you look on their Instagram, they've got Ferraris, blah, blah, blah. And you're going, how are you sad? Do you know what I mean? And we all do it. We're all guilty of it. And, so when I lost Joe, so Joe is, is my best, best friend, right? And the most amazing person, the funniest geezer you have ever met, but also brilliant, like genius mind. Every, every bit of thing that I've ever done in radio or anything like that, like genius bit of content was him. He is the mastermind behind it. And he, like when, when, when I lost him, I, I, I finally thought I have to do it. I can't sit back and think i know about how hard it can be at times struggling with your own mental health and being in a dark place so i have to do this one for him and i have to also do it because i don't want anyone to feel this pain that i've got now so what i set out to do is do a documentary looking at young male suicide around the uk and the problem is is that now, one, suicide is, is deemed almost a dirty word. It's a very tough word for people to say because it's still deemed as a, a thing of, like, swept under the carpet. We don't talk about that. Taboo, isn't it? Yeah, yeah very taboo. Mm. But the reality is, is that it's happening everywhere. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and the problem is, is what I always had a problem with was, look, Joe is someone that if I had a lineup of 20 of my, my friends that I know back to front, I would put him last as someone that I would ever think is struggling. And at what point does it always, what, at what point does the person that you least expect become the most you expect? Do you understand what yeah, I mean by yeah. that? And it, and, and it shows that, you know, things like depression, things like 
you know, someone wanting to, to, to end things, wanting to take their own life, it doesn't have a uniform. You shouldn't be a certain way. You shouldn't wear certain clothes. It, it doesn't show itself, you know. And the problem now that we have, that we're facing in, in our country, genuinely, is that suicide is not a problem that's facing middle-aged men. Because when you think about someone taking their own life, that's usually with, you know, you think businessman in a suit, you know, like kind of at the end of his career in a midlife crisis is the word that everyone always says, right? But the problem is, is now it's kids. And it really is kids. And this is what I'm trying to show in this documentary, that this is something that is happening everywhere to teenagers. You know, maybe people that are listening to this, that are struggling and, and, and the like, you know, this, this really is affecting them. And it was the hardest thing ever to go out, meet people. I, I met people along the way that have attempted to take their own life. Um, I met amazing friends and, and family of people that, that have taken their own life. And, and some of these kids, you know, like I, I would go to, to Belfast in the documentary and I'm meeting up with a lad of four, a, a bunch of 14 year old lads who are amazing and they're all looking out for each other, but they are terrified because they lost their best friend back in March last year. And then three, four days before I'm meant to go out and fly out and go and see them, another kid in their year, another young man takes his own life. Wow. And uh, in their school, in their year. And, <sighs> and it's tough, man. And, and, and the thing is, is what, what you're realizing is so many of these young guys, all of us, like, go through at some point in our life a form of depression. Like you do. Like it, depression isn't something that is weird. Everyone will have it at some point. And the problem is, is that we're not taught in schools how to deal with those moments. I'm sure any of you may have been through a moment in your head where you're like, where you feel like everything is just at its worst. Mm. You, 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 and, and you're stuck and you feel like uh, this is the worst place I've ever been in my head. And I, and I just want it to end. And it's in that moment that you realize, why was I never taught how to deal with this, this, this problem? Mm. You know, wh what's going on here? So I guess in the film, you know, I, I, it's kind of pushing to, to say to, to, to the government, to, to places, to, to kind of say, you know, add, you know, mental health, add things like, you know, understanding positive body image, positive, you know, positivity in terms of like looking out for one another, spotting simple signs in terms of how to make young boys be at one with their emotion. Add that into biology lessons, mm. you know, add that into the curriculum. And I met with professors who say that like, you know, the stark difference between someone that starts learning those things at the age of five all the way up makes a huge difference mm. to, to them as people. One of the things that, you know, we, we see in, and, and I go to a school in, in Tamworth, in the docks and they've started implementing like lessons to kids uh, at young ages about you know about mental health mm. and, and and about the reality of it you know and it brought me to tears man like i'm watching like a seven-year-old boy tell me what depression is why it's okay why you know he if he feels sad why he should just let someone know and why he should, you know, or, or if someone else seems like they're in a certain way, how to navigate around them and make them feel better. Mm. Out of us three, did any of you ever have a lesson on your mental health? No. No. Why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if it is the second highest killer in men our age, why are we not protected against it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of people are, are taking their own lives. And that's just a fact. And the problem is, is that, it's still such a taboo subject that no one wants to talk about it. How how do you think we can help it? Because like you said, with with Joe, he was be yeah. the last person that you'd spot signs in. So yeah. so how how do you seek out those signs? Or? Yeah. So I guess the thing is, is what I what what I really think is the best way to do this, and it's something that there's a few lines in this that that you know I I always go back to, and it's. I want people to be able to become the hero to their friend that I wasn't to my friend. And by that, I mean, pick up the phone, be that person to just ask your mates. I don't care even if you don't think they're going through anything, right? Ask their mates how they really feel. Push them. Do you know what I mean? What's the worst thing that's going to happen? They're going to get pissed off and not play a game of FIFA with you next time. Mm. Like, it, it, be that person that pushes that question. And I met these lads from Reading 
who again they lost their best friend and now to safeguard themselves they do a two okay rule and they check on each other and they they say you're right twice because in a conversation i walk in here i go you're right you go yeah, yeah, yeah and then you get into the conversation when realistically are you okay should be the most important question yeah so they have this thing of asking it twice and the second you do that, your guard is lowered after the first one. You really do actually open up. And it is about that. It's about this is, the, you know, this doc, unfortunately, there's no happy ending to it. It's this is going on now. And it's up to us, you know, in our age group to realize that this really can affect your friends or you. And with that, you need to take the onus away. I'm sick of seeing so many things being like, if you're struggling, talk i've struggled i've been through things the last thing i want to do is chat yeah when you're in that mood who do you want to talk to mm. no one that's the problem like so so the onus has to go away from people that are struggling to the friends yeah you know you as a friend you as a friend have to think who might be going for a tough time i'm, I'm going to check in on that person mm. and and that's it that, that's what we need to be doing and also obviously down, later down the line it needs to start being implemented and the government have to take kind of a role on it. Mm. Well, fair play to you, mate. Very Thanks, articulately man. put. And Sorry, I know I'm rambling. Like, you can no, chop the hell out no, of no, it. No, no, like, no, no. <laughs> it won't be chopped. It'll be left yeah. as it is. I guess having said that, how are you doing? Yeah, like, it, it's tough. Like, and I'll be honest with you, it's tough, man. It's really hard. Like, like I say, like, you know, going through something like that for everyone, not just myself, for, for Joe's family, for, for everyone that I, you know, I, I, I work with and, and everything mm. it, it's been horrible so we had to do something that or i felt like i had to do something that that could at least stop it for the next person potentially like uh, and if one person drops me a message after this doc comes out and says cheers man that that really helped me out one do you know what i mean of one i don't mm. care like i don't care what how many views it gets all those types of things that's it so i think it was it, it was the hardest again going back to the beginning is is it's the hardest and the thing that i didn't want to make yeah in this so there's a master interview so there's there's an interview w w with myself where it, it that goes throughout the doc and that was the first time i'd ever spoken to anyone about it about what had happened and about my own stuff and so what you're watching is my therapy session yeah it's, yeah tough <laughs> fair play mate no, fair play well we're, we're my dms are always open if you ever want to chat like well, so thank you very much no but i just that's mm. the thing like you know anyone listening now it's just mm. it's just one of those it's like you know just check in on your mates see how they're doing yeah yeah i mean like it's uh, uh, and so to, to put it into perspective that some people might understand we've had a whole array of guests on here and we've spoken similar things before we've not pushed the point as powerfully as you can but we've we've tried and um <laughs> you know calyx of all people yeah so he like he's like will randomly like dm me and ask me how i am and i'm not like super close with calyx or whatever so that's yeah. putting that's putting like your, your money where your mouth is and stuff like that and never once would i ever think well that's weird like why is he like yeah. that has always been a nice thing and sometimes like i've been like yeah i'm just fine mate whatever so so don't ever be like him be like the the, the people that you're yeah. encouraging people to be like do reach out the the, the, the worst that's going to happen is is that you're not going to get a reply or, or exactly. that, yeah, yeah and and, and it's and, you know it's knowing that like it's knowing that for, for the people that are struggling like most people go i'll wait for them to come to me mm. like that's the hardest thing like and and you know it, this isn't you know we, we ain't chatting about you know it, again it's it's hard for me to even say Suicide is not something that is uh, uh, an older guy thing. This is happening to kids, mm. and 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 you know, the the ages out there are just getting lower and lower, and it's a horrendous thing. And we have to protect our mates. Yeah. You know, if the government ain't gonna help us out <laughs> with it, yeah, got to do it together. Yeah, well put, mate. Well put. When's the doc out? So the doc's out uh, the sixteenth of March. Um, 9 p.m. BBC One, um, but it's from from that day onwards. It's always on BBC Three, um, on the iPlayer, um, so you can always check it out. So you can watch it in your own time. I know it's a bit deep, so mm. it's like it's one of those that you know if you want to watch it on your own, those types of things, you can check it out there. Lovely. Well, mate, you you've taken a a truly tragic thing and and, and pulled a, a, an ounce of positivity from that by yeah. spreading this message. In August 2020, six months into the pandemic, I lost Joe without any warning. Suddenly, 
and unexpectedly. I had no idea he was struggling. The day that we found out started like any other day. I went to the radio, I got into the building, and the first thing I noticed was Joe wasn't there. The show went on, and at five minutes past six, I'm texting saying, um, let me know you're okay, mate. And at this point, genuinely, I'm thinking, he's overslept. My executive producer then came into the room, and she says to me, he's in the house. And I knew. And I said, um, I said, is he gone? She said, yeah. 